Where is your place of safety? When troubles come, where is the place you run for refuge? Welcome to this week's midweek meditation. This is a short time every Wednesday where we simply pause to ponder God's word and pray together. And you are very welcome. It's great to have you with us. This week, we're having a look at Psalm 5. So can I encourage you to get hold of a Bible and open it up and turn with me to Psalm 5. We're going to be chewing on this wonderful psalm together. But before we do that, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read the psalm. Let's pray, shall we? Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you that your word gives us the encouragement and the security we need. Please, would you open our eyes and would you minister the truth of your word to our hearts? And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Psalm 5, and I'm going to read the whole psalm. Let's listen to what God's word says. It's to the choir master for the flutes and the psalm of David. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. But there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. That they flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them. For those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favour as with a shield. Where is your place of safety? When trouble comes, when hardships come, where where is it that you naturally run for refuge? For some of us, it may have been our homes. And now with COVID, our homes no longer feel really like a refuge, but more like a prison in the midst of lockdown. We long to be able to get out and about. It's amazing, isn't it, how something can change our perspective. Maybe for you, Your place of refuge isn't a place, but a person. Maybe it's a certain relationship. They're the person you always turn to. They're the phone number you always pick up first when trouble comes. But then again, relationships can disappoint, can't they? People can let us down. And even if they don't, we have that shadow of death looming over us. They might not always be able to be there for us. But then maybe your place of refuge, the place you run when troubles come, is the credit card, the Amazon delivery being delivered to your door. And there are lots of good things we enjoy in this world. But they don't satisfy, do they? They don't always give us the security we crave. That latest purchase, the novelty will soon wear off, won't it? So many of the places that we naturally run for refuge let us down. And that they're not immune from being battered by the evils in this world. We know, don't we, that the evil in this world is not something that's just out there. It's also in here as well. So wherever we go, it's hard to hide, isn't it? And all of these refuges we make so often can't withstand the evils of this world. So where can we find real refuge, real security? Well, Psalm 5 is a psalm in which David finds real security. He knows where to look for real security. He's in the midst of trouble. He 
in the first three verses, we, he talks about his groaning, the sound of his cry. He is in desperation. He is crying out to God for help. And it looks like there is evil people all around him, making life really hard. So where does David run to for refuge? Well, he knows that there is only one place that is safe. The only place we will truly find refuge is a place where evil cannot be. That's very true, isn't it? If there's a storm lashing outside, you go to the one place a storm cannot get, you get inside. If we want refuge from the evils of this world, we go to the one place that evil cannot be. Where is that? Well, David knows. He says it is the presence of God, God's heavenly throne room. That is where evil cannot be. Look at verse 4. He says, you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. Evil can't come into God's presence. The safest place in the whole universe is being in the presence of God. And David knows that he can enter. Look at verse 7. He says, but I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. He knows that he can come in. Evil will be kept out from God's throne room, but he may come in. This is the security that Jesus knows. Now, Jesus truly sings this psalm. I think of it. Think of all the evil that he faced in his life in, on the earth. Plotting against him. Slander, scorn, and ultimately the cross. Yet where is he now? He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, the place of God's presence, the place where evil cannot dwell, the place where evil cannot come and cannot touch. He knows that security. But then here's the question, are we able to know that? Are we able to sing this psalm along with David, along with Jesus? Well, wonderfully, the psalm tells us that we can. Look at verse 7 again. How does David enter God's presence? David is a man, if you know anything of David's life, you'll know that David in his lifetime did many evil things. He committed adultery. And then to cover it up, he murdered the woman's husband. Not exactly a spotless record. How can David say that I can come in? Well, look again at verse 7. He says, but I... Through the abundance of your steadfast love, it's through God's overflowing steadfast love that David may come in. That steadfast love is God's committed covenant love to his people. And it's a love that we see most clearly at the cross of Christ. How do we know that God loves his people? It's at the cross of Christ where Jesus took upon himself the consequences for our evil. The evil of all who would trust in him, of all who would embrace him. You see, at the cross, Jesus experienced being cast out, being forsaken. So that all who would trust him may be welcomed in. And so if we are trusting the Lord Jesus, if we belong to him, if we are one with him. We can say, I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will come into your presence. And look what David says is in God's presence, verse 11. He says, it's a place of joy. Let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. The place of God's presence is a place of deep joy for God's people. And then verse 11, he says, it's a place of protection. You spread your protection over them. Verse 12, you cover him with favours with a shield. If we have trusted Christ, if we are one with him, God spreads his wings of protection over us. Now, we still experience hardships and sadness and pain and struggles in this life. But here's a wonderful thing this psalm says to us. One day we will enter his presence fully. We know what it is to have God's presence now by his spirit. And he is keeping us now through all the troubles and struggles of this life that one day, through his steadfast love shown through Jesus on the cross, one day we will enter his house. We will live in his presence forever. And what will that 
day be like? Well, the book of Revelation, the very end, says on that day, evil will be cast out. Nothing evil can enter the new heavens and the new earth. And God's people will enjoy perfect security. So when your other refuges let you down, why not remind yourself that there is a greater refuge? My place of security is one that has eternal foundations. It is the presence of God. And if you are Christ, you can know that security, whatever is going on in your life right now. Well, I'm going to be quiet for a moment, and then we're going to pray together. Let's pray. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. Father, we thank you that because of your steadfast love in the Lord Jesus, we may enter. We may come before you to your place of security. We might know that refuge. We pray for us in the midst of the struggles and disappointments and hardships of life, that we would know that and we would look forward to that day when we dwell fully with you and you with us in perfect security. We continue to ask that you might uphold us through these difficult days, through the isolation of lockdown, through the anxiety of COVID, and through the many pressures we're under. Please keep our eyes fixed firmly on Christ. Please keep us looking to your throne room and longing to be there. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us again for this midweek meditation. Can I encourage you, as I say every week, to when this video ends, to perhaps read this psalm over again and to ponder it for yourself and to pray. Use it as a basis to shape your prayers. It's been wonderful speaking to you and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Goodbye.